going on guys, Casual Savage here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create this camera effect in Vegas Pro 16. Now in the example you saw at the start of the video, everything was created in Vegas Pro 16. However, there was one plugin I used. If you don't have the plugin, which is Sapphire Plugins, I will be showing you a way around that. Now as always, if you want to request a tutorial, just let me know in the comments below or ask me on Twitter. So here we are in Vegas Pro 16 and this is the clip I'll be using to create the shutter effect. So as you can see, I'm going to do it just as he gets punched. So really, really simple to do. The first thing we're going to be doing is finding out where we want the picture to take place. So just go across on your timeline like this and find the best part. I'll go there and from here you're going to press S on your keyboard. Now this is going to split this section right here and that's what we want and this right clip you still need it just drag it across to the side now all you're going to do is go back one keyframe so you can press the left arrow on your keyboard alternatively you can come up here and select previous frame now from here you want to make sure this is set to best and full and you want to select save snapshot to file now, of course you want to save it where you remember by default it will appear in your projects media once it's saved and you're just going to drag and drop this onto that video track so you can see here is the image and currently this is what you should have. So you can see it's going to create a freeze frame. And the next thing we're going to be doing is now adding on our green screen shutter effect. So we can drag and drop this on. And this time is where you need to find where you want the effect to happen. First thing you may notice here, this is not taking up the entire screen. So the way you fix that, you right click the green screen, select properties uncheck maintain aspect ratio now you'll also see some ghosting here and this is what i've been saying for years disable resample on every single clip and select ok you can see it gets rid of the ghosting and also now this has filled up the screen now something to note about this green screen you can see it doesn't start straight away so you do need to come across on your timeline and you can see the edges here is just starting so i'm just going to trim it down to the start so then it's going to come in and it's going to go out and again I'll trim it as soon as it's out of frame which is here and just trim it down. So the next thing we're going to be doing is lining up the camera shutter right in line in the middle of this so just as the screenshot moves in. So what we're going to do is come to the start as you can see this is where it's going to first initially come into place and right there that's where we want it right in the middle so now this is what we'll have just like that. Next thing we're doing is getting rid of the green screen. Really, really simple. All you're going to be doing is heading over to video effects and from video effects, you want to scroll up until you see chroma key. As you can see, chroma key, drag and drop on the default onto the green screen. And all you want to do is this color, select it, select the color picker, and then select the green background. Now all is almost done, but now we need to turn down the high threshold there we go and you can also double check that make sure the um, shutter itself is fine by selecting show mask only and that tells us that everything in white will remain but everything that is still showing is already gone so that was where the green screen was we can x out of this and i do recommend changing this back to preview and auto just so it doesn't lag while we edit and i'll play it through you can see that's now what we have you may want it to be quicker and to be honest I do too so if you do come to the end hold control and drag it in then we need to realign it again of course really simple though there we go I'm playing it through that's how it'll look now the next thing we're going to be doing is adding on the shutter effect really simple just drag and drop this onto a new audio track now notice here there are multiple different shutters you can use. Now the one I personally think is the best is this one right here with the biggest audio waveform. Of course you guys can play through and see what's best for you. However, I just think this one sounds the best and looks the best. So if I play this through, you can see almost lined up straight away. That looks better. So we have that in place and now it's time to create some effects to the image itself. Now notice in mine, I put a background underneath and I made it float. So I'll show you that right now. All we're going to do is right click and insert a video track. And we're going to drag this video track underneath our screenshot. Now I used a background of wooden planks, which is looped. And I will be providing a link in the description for you guys to download this. And you can see it's right here. 
Again, you'll notice there are black bars. All you need to do is right click, select properties, uncheck maintain aspect ratio, disable resample and select OK. Now heading back over to the image, this is where we're going to do some work. All we need to do is come to the pan and crop. So by default, it's going to be full screen like this after the shutter. Now what I want to do is first extend this out a bit longer. And you can use sync cursor here, so make sure that's highlighted. And as you move across here, you can see you move across on the actual preview at the same time. So at two seconds, I'm going to size this down by dragging it out like this. And then I'll also add a tilt to it as well, just like this. Now, if you don't see the rotation, which you should, then you can manually override it by coming over to the side here and just change the angle percent right here. So now if I play it through, this is currently what we have. Pretty simple. Now, if you have Sapphire plugins, I will be showing you the next step. If you don't have Sapphire plugins, I will put a link or a time on screen where you can skip to. So you don't have to use the plugin, I will be showing you an alternative. So for those with Sapphire plugins, what we're going to do is head over to video effects. And what we're going to look for is S underscore shake. So it's right here and I already have a preset set up for text floating. So I'm just going to drag and drop this onto our screenshot. And all I'm going to do is bring up the phase a little bit. So you guys can copy these settings right here that I have and X out of it. So now if we play it through, it should just add it a bit more movement to the image so you can see it floats around on this part, which I think looks a lot better. And like I mentioned, the intro is optional. So whether you use it or not, completely up to you. So for those that don't have Sapphire plugins, the alternative I recommend you do is just go across in the timeline, maybe see just a second after and tilt it the other way, maybe move it a little bit to the side and another second, tilt it, turn it to the other side, left click and drag all over these, right click and then change it to slow. Now if I X out a bit and play it through, you can see this is now what we get. So it tilts side to side. And of course, at this point, we're going to go back to normal. So that's how long I want the screenshot to stay on screen. I'm going to press S here and delete the rest of the wooden planks. Now come back to the pan and crop on your image and go across to the end keyframe and then go back one or two frames. So I'm just going to go back two frames, then right click and select restore. This is going to put it back to normal. Again, I recommend right clicking this keyframe and changing it to slow. We can now X out of this. We can drag our video back and then playing it through. This is now what we've just created. As you can see, just like that. Now, the last thing I'm going to be showing you is how to add a glow to the image itself. So what we're going to do is right click insert a new video track and drag this image above onto the separate track. All you want to do is select the motion tracking tool, then uncheck sync cursor, make sure you're right at the beginning and just select 2D glow. Now if I just size this down a bit and we click onto our timeline, you can see we already have the glow in place. And here you can change the color to whatever color you would like to. So I select a white, select OK, it's changed like that. Up here you can control the blur, you can control the intensity, you get full control over the glow right from the track motion. So I'll play it through for you one last time, it's what we created. As you can see, super, super simple to create. It does take a bit of time. However, once you wrap your head around the steps, it's really simple to do and you can do it probably within about two minutes.